What should you do to get ready for Raft Chapter 3? Hi friends, and welcome back to Raft. Chapter 3 is finally coming on Monday, June 20th, in all of its long-awaited glory. Furthermore, the devs have confirmed that you will be able to experience the new story in your existing Raft worlds, so you don't have to completely start over if you don't want to. But that doesn't necessarily mean that you'll be ready to enjoy all of the new content with what you currently have on your rafts. So without further ado, let's get into how to prepare for Raft Chapter 3. The first step is of course making sure that you have a suitable raft. There are plenty of new machines, items, and general other stuff coming with the update, so you're going to need a place to put all of that new stuff. I'd highly recommend having at least a little bit of dedicated space to plop down new machines and anything else you may want so you don't have to reorganize your whole raft to accommodate all of the new things that you want to experiment with. And if you're in the camp of, Allie, I'm starting over and I need a raft design that works for chapter 3, boy do I already have something for you. Of course, you're going to need the receiver and antenna setup with engines and a sail if you want to explore past Balboa, but that's nothing new. If you want to get places really fast, make a ton of paddles and get a good arm workout in on the way. The design of the raft itself doesn't matter at least as long as it makes you happy. It's the literal name of the game, so needing a raft isn't surprising, but what do you need on that raft? Mostly materials, I would say. With the introduction of trading posts and the recycler, I'm gonna hazard a guess that it will be actually worth it to collect things like leaves and plastic again. Pretty much for right now, once you've built up your raft, those things tend to stop being useful, and I personally always end up throwing out stacks and stacks of them. But again, I think they'll finally be useful mostly to compact into trash cubes. So on that raft that you're either building or modifying, make sure that you have plenty of the current simple collection nets, or leave space for the advanced version that's coming. My computer stutters taking out just 10 items out of a net, so I don't know what benefit adding in the advanced nets will do, but it's still worth keeping in mind. In that same vein, fill up all of your storage with literally every resource you can think of. Granted, I definitely fall into the hoarder camp in video games, but if you really want a doomsday prep for chapter 3, you probably want to embrace your inner hoarder a little bit too. And if you really want to make the most out of those collection net spaces, the trash stream is only about 26 tiles wide, so you can actually always build either a small bar of nets either in front of or behind your net to pick up literally everything that floats past you. Obviously, you'll need plenty of all of the metal ores and ingots for the machines. The devs have already confirmed that you'll need titanium to craft a decent amount of the new stuff, so that means that there's a lot of treasure hunting in the near future. Island hopping is going to be more useful than ever pretty soon, but stocking up on all of that sweet, shiny silver metal is going to go a long way in guaranteeing that you're able to make all of the fun new machines. Also in the metal category, I specifically think that we're going to need a decent amount of copper ingots. The tier 2 battery looks like it will be available after the radio tower, and you'll of course need tons of copper for tons of batteries to power all of those new machines. You'll likely also need circuit boards to craft the machines, so it's worth stocking up on vine goo as well. Personally, I'd keep most of it in goo form rather than crafting all of the circuit boards right away because there might be recipes that just require the goo itself. Additionally, scrap is pretty high on my list of resources to be grinding for. Nearly every advanced blueprint currently in the game requires scrap, and it's also a required ingredient for the existing batteries, meaning it's likely that it will be necessary for the advanced batteries as well. There also seems to be some more advanced tools on their way, and I definitely wouldn't be shocked to learn that scrap is a necessary ingredient for those recipes either. Fortunately, scrap is pretty easy to grind. The average small island has roughly two stacks of scrap, so if you prioritize collecting it, you should have a full chest in no time. This may seem a little less obvious, but I think it's worth your time to make an automated garden on your raft. It's not fully evident if you'll be able to grow these yet or just trade for them, but the chilies and the turmeric that we see in the trading post menu seem like the perfect foods to grow on your raft to put into some of the fancy new juices. Plus, there's a new achievement sneaking around on Steam called Powered Up for having all of the buffs for meals and drinks at once. It's kind of like Minecraft's how did we get here advancement for having all of the status effects, but the FDA approved version. So that clearly means that the various beverages and foods will buff you in various ways, and that means that you need to be prepared to make all of those recipes at a moment's notice. 
I think for the first time pretty much ever, it'll be useful to have a dedicated tree farm on your raft. Having easy access to coconuts and mangoes and bananas seems like a no-brainer for the juicer. My favorite tree farm design involves two rows of three tree plots with a sprinkler behind them, and then one more tree plot on either side. That way they all get water and it's relatively space efficient. For the medium crop plots for watermelon and pineapples, you can arrange them in a little cubby for optimal space usage, and you can even pack a total of 10 medium crop plots in the small area to be automatically watered by the raised sprinkler. But the small crop plots is where you can really go ham. I think it's more likely that the chilies and turmeric will belong in small crop plots because both are relatively small plants in real life. So in the same area as the medium crop plots, you can fit a total of 73 small crop plots. There are a total of 8 of each for the chilies, potatoes, beets, and strawberries, with some hidden ones for the turmeric. Then I've laid out plenty of space for the flower farm on the walls. Technically, everything above the white layer needs to be watered by hand, but there is a small water access cabinet behind the gate back here to make it easily accessible. Optionally, you can also hang a few extra crop plots for the ceiling for some extra plant storage. So in terms of doomsday food prepping for the new achievement, this should set you up quite nicely. Of course, there are certain food items like mushrooms and red berries that you can only get on large islands, but just pick those up as you go treasure hunting for titanium and you'll be good to go. I'll leave figuring out the protein sources to use since clearly harvesting meat is not my strong suit. But most importantly of all, the best way to prepare for Chapter 3 is just to enjoy the limelight that Raft is going to have for a little bit, and appreciate all of the hard work that the dev team has put into this amazing game. Prepare your mind to be blown away by the insane new story features, and prepare to experience this world all over again in a new way. I don't know about you, but I absolutely cannot wait for Monday. So, speaking of Monday, I'll be streaming all of Chapter 3 with my friend Nick over on Twitch, so be sure to follow me over there and check out the stream. It'll be chaotic and I will be losing my mind the whole time. But that's every way that I would advise preparing for Chapter 3. I hope you enjoyed. Please consider leaving a like if you did, and consider subscribing if you haven't already. It really helps me out. I hope to see you all again soon, but until then, have a great day. <laughs>